this video is going to go through the various features of D2L that are going to be available to you to make working through this eLearn class a little bit easier. So you can come back to this video at any point in time and access the various points just to see how things work to make sure that you're doing things correctly. So this is the opening page within D2L. The first thing that you're going to want to do is here on the right hand side. Now, if you see what I see, which is it says Google Apps, and then you have your mail here, that means you've already done this step. So you can actually just move forward a little bit in the video. But if you don't see what I have here on the right hand side, you're going to want to make sure that you authorize your account. So what you're going to do is you're going to see a URL, a hyperlink that's going to be linked there. It's going to say something to the effect of um, link your Google account to D2L, something to that effect. Click on that link and what it will do is it will refresh this page. Once it refreshes this page, you are then going to click it again and it's going to say this time authorize the app or something to that effect. You're going to click on authorize. It's going to refresh the page a second time. And at that point in time, you should see what I see here, which is unread mail, etc. This, what this will do is it will allow you to access your D2L, um, it will allow you to access your Google Drive through D2L. So this will allow you to be able to pull from your Google Drive without you having to export it as a PDF or anything like that. So it will do a lot of the work for you and it will just search from your Google Drive. This will make things a whole lot easier for you as you move through this course. So please make sure you do that um, right now. So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and do that right now. So hopefully you've done that and you've connected your Google app with the uh, D2L here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the course that uh, that you're taking. So in this case, this video is for my HHS class. So you're going to be going into the HHS uh, course. Now you'll see that it does say that it's closed. I'm just going to use an old shell because I haven't set up the new shell as, the, as of the recording of this video, but it's going to be relatively the same. So just to give you a sense of what it looks like like so you um, know how to access it and, and what are the different features okay so you're gonna enter into it and you're going to see um, uh, this is the overview of the course okay so this is the setup that ever that the course will have the picture might be slightly different um, there might be more or less uh, things at the top here for some of your classes you may have actually seen that they have icons I have chosen to do words so you see like it tells you specifically what to expect in here um, and what to look for um, so it just kind of depends on the teacher that you have. But uh, just to give you an example, this is what I have it as a setup. OK, now just to walk you through a couple of the different features that are available to you here. This little home button will take you back to that home page that we were just at. So I'll click it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So it takes you back to that home page. Uh, this waffle shows you all the courses that you have. So you can choose from those courses and, you know, toggle between this class and let's say your math class or something like that. So you can uh, select that if you want. This is your email. So this is going to be your main way to contact me. So if you want to ask me anything, you're going to be using the email here. So um, what you're going to be doing is you're going to come into here. You can reply to an email that I've sent you. If you see that there's a little red dot, that's your indicator that I have sent you an email. So you should be regularly checking this and making sure that that red dot isn't showing because if that red dot is showing, that means you have a message and you need to be checking your messages. Over here is the paging. Please do not use the paging system with me. I will not be using paging. So do not use this. Notification bell just lets you know if there's a new um, addition to the course or new changes or anything like that. Uh, generally speaking, you can just ignore this for the most part, unless there is a message or something that's come in. But the most important one for you is going to be the email. So please just make sure you're checking that. You can also do so through the email link here. So these are going to the same location. Now, the easiest way for you to get my email address and how to email me is not to just type in my name and hope for the best um, because you might actually have it bounce back. The easiest way is to come over here to class list and what it will do is it will populate everybody in your class. Um, and so what's going to come up is you're going to see not only my name, but you're going to see everybody in our class's name. You're going to select my name. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here you see that uh, it shows my name and there's a little carrot here. What you're going to do is you're going to select on this carrot and it's going to show send email. And so you can just click on that 
and it will open up a new screen and you can just type in your email and click send and you're good to go. Um, and so that will be able, that will allow you to be able to send me emails pretty easily. You can also uh, send attachments as well through it, okay, if, if needed. Um, so that's how you can send an email to me. On this uh, homepage here, you'll also see announcements. Any announcements that I uh, need you to see right away, I'll be posting here. So things like you'll see that there's this announcement here about a test next Wednesday. This is, you know, obviously this is from June, um, so you don't have to be concerned by that. But um, this just lets you know what's what's going on. So if you do see that there's an announcement, you'll get a notification up here in the notification bell. But you're going to want to make sure that you read to see what the latest news is. Now, the place that you're going to want to go to first whenever you're coming into the class is you're going to want to go to the calendar. So let's check out the calendar and I'll show you a little bit around what it looks like. All right, so so I've gone a little bit further back just to give you a sense of what it looks like here. Um, but you're going to see on a day-to-day -day basis uh, or weekly, just depending on how I kind of organize the course, you'll just have to um, check the calendar to see. You're going to see the lesson that you're going to be required to do for that day. So for example, on February 10th, it is lesson 1.1. So what I would do is I would click on this and then I'm going to select more and it's going to open up a new page and that new page is going to give me the activity that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to select research methods and it's going to take me right to the content where I can then uh, look at the content, see what's, you know, what's being over, uh, what the overview is here. And then if I scroll right down to the bottom, you will see, um, the instructions for today's activity. So in this case, it's asking you to complete this chart and then you're going to put the chart to the Dropbox. So everything that you need to know is always going to be at the bottom of the page and it's going to be outlined for you uh, uh, explaining what you need to do re in reference to the the um, the reading that's up top. Sometimes it might just be uh, things linked within here. So you're just going to want to look for that yellow box. It's going to give you all the information that you're going to need. So once again, you're going to go to the calendar. The calendar is going to be linked. And in the calendar, you're going to see all of the days with the information that you need. Um, if there's a test coming up or anything like that, that will also be on the calendar. So this should be your first stop when you're coming to do your work and trying to see what you need to do for that given day. So just come to the calendar. Everything will be linked right there for you. Click on the more and it will list out everything that you need to do. If you ever see something like this one here where it says discussion topic, this means that there is a discussion that's taking place in our discussions tab, which is also located up here. But the actual discussion question is directly uh, linked for you in the calendar um, as well as in the content page. So let me show you the content page and then we'll talk a little bit about the discussions. So let's click up here to our content. This is another way for you to access the content, but it's just a little bit clearer if you go through the calendar because everything's linked directly within the calendar. Um, but you will also see here the various units. Now, you may not see all of these units because this is the end of a course, so all of the units have been released. So if you're at the beginning of a course, you're not gonna see all of them released. Um, but let's go have a look at unit one here. If I click this down arrow, I'll see all of the lessons. Now, 1.1, what that means is it is unit one, and this is lesson one. So you, of course, want to make sure that you do lesson one before you do lesson two, and then lesson two before three and on and on, right? Um, and the test review and unit assignments and things like that will be released um, once the, you've passed the requisite knowledge that you need for that particular unit. So if you don't see the test review or you don't see the unit assignments just yet, um, don't worry, they're coming. Um, if you don't have access to something for some reason, um, you may want to just make sure that you have completed the things that you need to complete in order to unlock these, these features, okay? So you just want to make sure that you're moving through all of the tasks as necessary. Necessary. But again, they'll all be linked up here in the calendar. Um, so you can just go straight to the calendar and it's actually linked right to this page here, for example. Okay. So that's one way you can do it. And if we go into 1.1, there's that activity that we just saw. And I can click on it just to show you what it looks like. So you'll see that's the exact same thing that we just saw. 
And then over here, this is where you can submit it to the assignments. And we'll talk about that in, in a couple of moments, but um, it, it also gives you the direct link to um, to submit to the Dropbox. Um, it's also linked here at the bottom as well. Okay, that will take you to the same spot. So there's a couple of places for you to be able to just drop the assignment in. You only have to do it once, but there are three ways for you to do it. So um, there's no, uh, you know, you, you can't miss it. It's it's in so many different places for you. Okay. Um, so let's talk about, so that's a content. So let's go to discussions. Now, when a post is unlocked, you're going to see this little, um, uh, you know, this little lock here is going to be unlocked and it will give you the dates that you can reply within. Now you'll notice here, it says Tuesday, February 18th to Thursday, February 20th. You can start replying as soon as it opens. So on February 18th, at 8 a.m. Um, and then the last possible opportunity for you to be posting is by February 20th by 3.30, okay? So you can you should be posting multiple times. Um, and it's also indicated that you must post first. So you won't be able to see other people's replies until you've posted. So it's really important that you post early so that you have an opportunity to then reply to people, okay? So when you come into here, if this was uh, unlocked, what you would see is start new thread or reply. Now, if there was um, actual replies, then you would click on the person's message and you would reply to that person's message. And there's a, a button that will say reply. If you're starting a new message or starting a thread, as you see here, you will see start a thread. So you're going to press start a thread and you will then start your message and you would give it a nice title that is reflective of what you're going to talk about. You want to follow um, the uh, concept of TLDR, too long, didn't read. So if you write too much, people aren't going to read it. So you want to be concise, but I don't mean to be concise in the sense of, um, you know, Thank you for your comments. I really appreciate it. Have a nice day. Like that's not what you need to be saying. What you need to be doing is is showing that you've understood the concepts, that you are providing your knowledge, your understanding of the concept, and that you are replying in such a way to show that you are you know, understanding what this discussion topic is about. So in this case, it's about the future of the family. So you're going to be writing in in reference to that idea of what the future of the family looks like. Okay. So you just want to make sure that you're keeping on topic. And if you're replying to someone, you want to do so in a way that shows that you heard or read what that person was saying. So I really agreed when you said this and then summarize quickly what that person said. Um, but I, I think this, and then summarize what you think. Um, and so that you have a little bit more, uh, depth to your response. Okay. So that's the discussion. So you can actually kind of just scroll through and you can see some of the discussions that are available to you. Um, and you can actually even subscribe to them. Uh, so if you get a reply, you know that you got a reply. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so you can subscribe to them. Uh, once they're open, it gives you a little bit more flexibility to see the different threads that are in there. Just remember that you are being evaluated for it. So it's really important that you make efforts to read what people are saying and reply to them um, in, you know, uh, good time so that you're not waiting until Thursday at three o'clock to try and do the work. You want to make sure that you're doing it over the course of the time that you've been allotted. The next is assignments. So remember when I when we were looking at the content, we were looking at the calendar, it was linked directly to the assignments. This is the third way that you can access the um, the place for you to drop in your assignments. So if you do have an assignment that you're submitting, you can do it through here. Every time you complete your homework, you're going to submit to the assignments Dropbox. So once you click the assignments uh, tab, it's going to take you to the list of all the work that's going to be um, coming up in the semester. Now, obviously, we're going to be looking at this from a unit by unit basis and lesson by lesson basis. So once I finish, let's say 1.1, I'm going to upload that to the 1.1 section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on 1.1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my file. So I would then attach it. Now you'll see here, one of the options is Google Drive. So now that we've linked our Google Drive to D2L, we can actually just pull right from our Google account. The other option is you can pull it from your computer, but just please make sure that it is in a PDF format so that it's correctly linked, okay? So it's really important that you make sure that you are doing one of the two. Um, those are the most accessible to you. 
There's no need to put anything in the comments, but if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to, but you don't need to do that. And then you click submit. Once you do that, like I said, you're going to receive an email saying that you uh, have submitted and there's a confirmation. If you do not receive that email, then your submission has not gone through. And if you don't hit submit, then um, your submission has not gone through. And therefore your assignment could be late, could be not received and you could receive a zero. So it's really important that you hit that submit and you make sure that you get that confirmation email um, uh, from D2L. So the goal is that you wanna make sure that all of these have something submitted with it, okay? Um, now, if you have a due date for a particular thing, so this is a an assignment that was being evaluated, you might see a due date listed here. So once that due date has passed, the drop box will be locked and you will not be able to submit uh, your assignments, your activities beyond that drop box date. And as a result, you could incur late penalties, you could receive a zero. So so it's really important that you meet those deadlines and you just try to make sure that completion status is complete so that all of these are all filled in throughout the course of the semester. The next is quizzes. So this is when there is going to be a test. You're going to come to the quizzes section. Now, you're not actually going to see um, all of the, the tests listed. You only see what's upcoming because these are, again, um, from the past, uh, they've already past. So um, when there's a test that's coming up, you would then click on this and it would allow, it would tell you how much time you're allotted. Um, you're only allowed, allowed one attempt. And then if this was within the time frame of being able to take the test, you would see enter quiz or something to that effect. And so you would just enter, you would click on it and you would enter. Now your time will count down from 40. Um, and so, so you have 40 minutes to complete this test. So just be, make sure that you're paying attention to how much time is being, um, is, is, is left for you. Okay. When you are looking to find out your feedback on a particular test, what you're going to do is you can go one of two ways. So one way is by going to the little carrot here and clicking on submissions. The other is to click on, on attempt. So I'm going to click on, on attempt. Okay. And it's going to tell me what my score is. Now uh, it's listed here as a zero, probably because I haven't marked it, but um, what you're going to see is your mark at a 30 and then you can click on attempt one and it will give you feedback on your uh, test. Now, once the test has been released, now obviously I'm, gonna, I'm not going to show you this test here, but um, what you would see is the questions. Um, so the things that you got correct, the things you got incorrect. So it gives you a sense on, on how well you did on that test. And so you can click done. The other way that you can see your grades is of course through grades. So you can see your test grades here, but everything else like your assignments, um, your discussions, anything like that is going to be found in the grades portion. Um, so obviously I have a 0% here, but um, you would have uh, hopefully better than 0%. Um, and then you would see your point value for the various uh, activities, discussions, assignments, and quizzes that we've taken, as well as your CPT um, and your final exam, if there's a final exam, okay? And it'll all just be listed here for you. I talked about the email. So again, if you're looking to send an email to me or to receive your emails to just see it in a little bit better window, uh, you can come here to the email section. And the final portion is the secondary databases. This is um, where you can find various research uh, sources. So if I'm looking for information on my topic that I'm researching for one of the unit assignments or maybe for my CPT, I can come straight up here and let's say we'll go to Cengage Learning, for example. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the um, Cengage uh, page. Now, typically your password is going to be um, the password that you would have um, from your school board. So this is going to give you the various sources that it's available for you. Gale Health and Wellness is a good one. So I'm going to click on that, for example, and it's going to give me the source. So let's say I'm doing my topic on, I don't know, we'll say, say families. Um, and it's going to give me all kinds of resources that are, that are available to me. Um, and I can actually even look at the source and it will even uh, cite it for me by going up here and clicking the cite button. Um, it will give me different options. In this class, we use APA 7. So I'm going to click APA 7. And all I need to do is click select. 
And then I'm going to copy it and put it into my bibliography, into my references page. And that's it. And we've got ourselves a citation for this particular article that we've used. You can also send this article to your Google Drive if you want. Um, so that will also, that's also an option for you. And you can highlight it and things like that. So, um, so a couple of things that are available to you, you can print it, give yourself the link, whatever the case might be is. Um, to change your anything in your profile, so if you come here to your profile, you can change your avatar. And so I would definitely recommend that you change your avatar to be something that is reflective of who you are. The advantage of this is that it will actually show up for me when I'm marking your assignments. I get I can actually see your avatar and it just adds a little personality to uh, for you. For you. Uh, for you, for me. Um, so please change your picture here. That should be the one thing that you do uh, uh, right off the bat, okay? Um, so change your picture. You don't need to worry about anything else because um, none of this really changes anywhere else. Um, but the picture shows up um, when in your discussions, in your um, uh, when you're submitting your assignments and things like that, and, and I'm evaluating things for you, I actually can see uh, an image associated with it. Okay, so those are the, the that's the overview of our course here. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me through the D2L email, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Again, if you ever want to come back to the course home, just click on the course home on the side here. All right, good luck. I hope this is going to be a great semester for you.